It is a very strange feeling standing in the pulpit today. Normally our church would be full to capacity, but today I'm looking at empty pews. Oh, how quickly our circumstances can change. Because of this coronavirus, we find ourselves in a very dark valley. However, although we find ourselves in difficult and changing circumstances, let us never forget that our blessed Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, changes not. And as we're going to find out as we turn to God's Word, not only is Christ the God of the mountain, but he is also the God of the valley. Just before I bring you God's Word, there's just a couple of things that I want to say to our congregation in Tandragi. First of all, continue to pray for one another, especially the elderly in our church. Indeed, pray for all senior citizens at this time, that God will keep his hand upon them. Also, I want to thank all who have joined our prayer chain. So far, we have over 60 Christians praying every day for one another in our congregation and praying for our land and the situation that we find ourselves in. Could I encourage others to come and join our prayer chain? If you're able to do so and willing, then contact me and I'll add you on to the prayer chain. If there's a day and age when we need to pray and seek the face of God, then it is this day and age in which we live. But let us continue to be sensible and wise in these days. Let us not panic. And above all, let us continue to trust in the Lord for his help and for his guidance. Very simply, I want to draw your attention to a text of Scripture that is found in Psalm 72 and verse 20. In this text of Scripture, we read these words. The prayers of David, the son of Jesse, are ended. The book of Psalms is one of the books of the Bible which has blessed God's people down through the centuries, perhaps more than any other book in the Bible. And certainly even today, this inspired collection of prayers have been used by God to encourage and build up God's people in their most holy faith. Indeed, no matter where you go in Christendom today, the testimony of God's people right across this world is that the book of Psalms has been and always will be a great source of spiritual edification in time of trial. And certainly, we're living in a time of trial in this day and generation. As we all know, there are 150 Psalms. 72 of them were ascribed to King David. 12 were written by Korah. 12 by Asaph. One each by Heman, Ethan, and Moses, and 50 are anonymous. Therefore, you can see right away that the majority of the Psalms were penned by King David. David is described in the Bible as the sweet psalmist of Israel. And throughout his life, he was undoubtedly a great man of prayer. As I have said, each of these Psalms is a prayer. Therefore, in the book of Psalms, we have 72 prayers that David offered during his life upon this earth. As you read the Psalms of David, time and time again, in all these individual Psalms, we see sighing is turned into singing through praying. Psalm 72 is the last Psalm that David offers before he dies. And although there are psalms after this that bears David's name, Psalm 72 is the last psalm he penned. You see, the book of Psalms is not set out in chronological order. And it's important that we remember this when we read the book of Psalms. Therefore, Psalm 72 is a very solemn psalm because it draws our attention to the last prayer of King David before he died. Very simply, 
I want us to learn three things about the prayer life of King David. And I pray that these words will bless your heart and encourage you. But I also pray that they will challenge your heart today. Verse 20, let me read it again. The prayers of David, the son of Jesse, are ended. First of all, I want you to notice the opportunity that God gave David to pray. The prayers of David, the son of Jesse. These words teach us very simply that David had the opportunity to pray and that he took the opportunity to pray. You know, the greatest privilege that the child of God has is the privilege of coming into the presence of God around the throne of grace. Child of God, can you think of any greater privilege than to pray and to seek the face of God? The privilege of praying is given to the redeemed of God. The Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Therefore, the opportunity to come into the holy presence of God is given to you and I who are saved and washed in the precious blood of the Lamb. King David had such an opportunity because he was a child of God. David's testimony to God's salvation was this. He brought me out. He brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the merry clay, and set my feet upon a rock. He hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear and shall turn to the Lord. But David not only had the opportunity to pray because he was the child of God and saved by God's grace, but he took the opportunity to pray. As I have said in the book of Psalms, we have at least 72 prayers that David offered. You see, it is one thing to have the opportunity to pray, but it is another thing to take the opportunity. And time and time again throughout David's life, he took the opportunity to wait upon God. Child of God, you and I, in this day and age in which we live, especially when we think of the situation in this world and in our land, we need to take the opportunity to pray and to seek the face of God again. That's why I would encourage you to join our prayer chain. We need to pray and cry unto God in this day in which we live that the Lord will come and intervene in our nation. I wonder, are you taking the opportunity that God has given to you? David could have used many excuses not to pray. After all, he was the king of Israel. His duties would have been many. His workload would have been great. But David took the time to seek the face of his God. The Lord Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Oh, I pray in this crisis that we're found in that we will pray and that we will pray earnestly with all our hearts that God would intervene and that the Lord would come in mercy. Let us pray, God, in wrath, remember mercy. But notice something else here about the prayer life of David. Not only the opportunity that God gave David to pray, but the prosperity that David enjoyed. There's no doubt that David's life was blessed because he was a man who sought the Lord. God's hand of blessing was upon him for good. When you study the life of David, you learn very quickly that the Lord blessed David individually. And although there were times in his life when he went into bypath meadows, every time he sought the Lord with all his heart, God touched him and used him in a mighty way. He was blessed personally. But not only was David blessed personally, but the Lord blessed David's kingdom. The nation of Israel was blessed because David took the time to pray. We haven't got the time just now, but when you read the life story of David, you read about David praying on different occasions before he went into battle. 
But certainly when you study David's life, you find that Israel was blessed. God blessed the nation because King David was a man of prayer. But also the Lord blessed David's son Solomon because of David's prayers. Psalm 72, if you're familiar with the psalm, and we haven't taken the time to read all the psalm today, but you take the time to read the psalm later. Psalm 72, as we have said, is the last prayer of David. But in this psalm, David is praying for Solomon, his son. We read in verse 1 of Psalm 72, Give the king thy judgments, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. There David is praying for Solomon. And in verse 4, he continues to pray for Solomon by saying, He shall judge the poor of that, the people. He shall save the children of the needy and shall break in pieces the oppressor. In this psalm, David prays that God will give Solomon wisdom. And of course, we know that God answered that prayer. Long before Solomon prayed for wisdom, David prayed that God would give Solomon wisdom. And of course, when you study the reign of Solomon, God certainly blessed Solomon in his reign. Child of God, God will bless you and I if we wait upon him. God will prosper us spiritually if we cry unto him. The Bible says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Over in Second Chronicles and 26 and verses 3 to 5, we read these words concerning Uzziah. It says in verse 3, 16 years old was Uzziah when he began to reign, and he reigned fifty and two years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And then verse 5 says, And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, in other words, as long as he prayed and cried unto God, God made him to prosper. Through prayer, God will bless our nation again. Through prayer, God will bless our churches again. Through prayer, God will bless our families again. Through prayer, God will bless our lives again. Through prayer, God will send revival to us again. There's no knowing indeed what God will do if we would seek His face. The promise is, I will hear from heaven, God says, I will heal your land. Therefore, let us be encouraged when we think of prayer and when we think of seeking the face of God. It is no vain thing to wait upon the Lord. Thank God the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So let me say again, join our prayer chain. Come and seek the face of God with us at this time. And let us remember that there is still a God in heaven who hears and answers the prayers and the cries of his people. But notice something else just before we close. Not only do I want you to consider the opportunity that God gave David to pray and the prosperity that David enjoyed because of prayer, but notice the reality of David's prayer life. Our text emphasizes this truth. It says, the prayers of David, the son of Jesse, are ended. The time came when David's prayer life came to an end. The moment came when David offered his last prayer to God. David's praying ceased. We read in 1 Chronicles 29, verse 28, And David died in a good old age, full of days, riches, and honor. And Solomon his son reigned in his stead. We've already emphasized that Psalm 72 is the last 
prayer that David offers before he leaves this scene of time. O oh, child of God, the truth is this, and here's the challenge for us. The day will come when our prayer life upon this earth will be over. And that's why it is so important to seek the Lord while He may be found and call upon Him while He is near. That is why it is so important, especially in this day and age in which we, we are living, to cry unto God and to take the opportunity that He has given to us to pray. Because the day is coming when our lives upon this earth will be over. And our prayer life, therefore, will cease. You will notice that it does not say about David that the effects of his prayers ended. Just that his prayers ended. Although our lips may be silenced, and although our life upon earth may be ended, the fragrance of our prayers are ever before God. As we have said, when David died, Solomon continued to reign, and as Solomon was blessed, God continued to answer David's prayers, even through Solomon, his son. And child of God, there's no knowing what God will do with our prayers, even in the future. Even after we have died and left this scene of time. In Revelation 5 verse 8, we read that our prayers are preserved by God in golden vials, golden cups. And in Revelation 8 verses 1 to 3, it speaks of God opening those golden vials. And the truth is, many a man, many a woman's prayers that they have offered on earth have been answered long after they have died and gone home to heaven. God does not forget the heartfelt prayers of His people. And that's why it is so important never to give up on God and never to give up on prayer, because God remembers our prayers long after we have prayed them. And although Someday we will die like David, and our prayer life upon this earth is over. Our prayers will still be effective. It's not a wonderful thought. It's not a wonderful truth that we read about in the precious, precious Word of God. Therefore, let us continue to seek the face of God, especially in these days. Let us pray for one another. Let us uphold one another around the throne of grace. Let us pray for our church in these days. Let us pray for our nation in these days. Let us seek the face of God and cry unto Him for blessing and for His prosperity, even in our lives spiritually. The prayers of David, the son of Jesse, are ended. Maybe there's someone listening today, and you're not saved. You're not born again of the Spirit of God. Well, you need to pray. You need to pray the sinner's prayer. God, be merciful to me, the sinner. That's the prayer, of course, that the publican offered when he went up into the temple. And the Bible says that he went down to his house justified. In other words, he went down to his house forgiven and saved by the grace of God. And you know, friend, if you're not saved, that's the only prayer God is obligated to answer for you. And I pray in these circumstances that were found, these days of uncertainty, that you will realize that you're only a mortal and that someday, perhaps sooner than you think, you must die and go out to meet God. Seek the Lord this day and call upon Him for salvation and cry unto Him. And thank God He will save you for time and for all eternity. And of course, that's the reason why the Lord Jesus died upon the cross and shed His precious blood for your sins. Oh, would you come and trust the Lord Jesus this day? I pray that God will bless His Word to your hearts, and encourage us, child of God, to hold on to the horns of the altar 
and in the days that lie ahead, that we will be found upon our knees seeking the face of God for an outpouring of His Holy Spirit. If there's a day when the nation needs to pray, it is this day. And we would call the nation to prayer. We would call the churches to prayer. We would call our families to prayer. Indeed, we would call ourselves to be found around the throne of grace much in these days in which we live. Let us all pray. Father in heaven, we do thank Thee and praise Thee for all Thy mercies to us. And we thank Thee, Lord, for the Word of God and the encouragement of prayer. We thank Thee, Lord, for the blessing of prayer. And we do pray in these days, Lord, that You would give us the burden to pray and to seek Thy face. Remember our congregation. We think of all the families in our congregation. Lord, keep Your hand upon us, and especially our senior citizens. We pray, Lord, that You'll keep us all safe in these days. And, O oh God, that You would give us wisdom. And, Lord, help us day by day to cast our burden upon the Lord. For, O oh God, Thou hast promised to give us help in our time of need. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen.